you know, I think kids oftentimes are like, okay, what is going on? And I'm not liking this. Like it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And this is hard. And so I think being patient with them in that process and providing them resources and tools to be able to process that out process and cope with that in a healthy way is it's vital. Your blended family has a hundred percent chance of success when you do it God's way. We are blended kingdom families and we want to provide biblical resources to heal and restore families with a message of hope for the next generation. Let's get after it. Hey guys, welcome back to the BKF podcast. We are pumped to be with you today as we go into part three of our four part series on beginning to blend. And uh, if you haven't already, take an opportunity, like, share, comment, leave us a review. We would love to hear from you. And if you are joining us for the first time on this series, make sure that you go back to weeks two and one to kind of catch up on the whole series. So today we're going to be talking about the newly married. Yes. So you guys, this is after you've dated, you've got engaged and you're new, newly, newly married, newlyweds. Yeah. This and is so after the wedding. After the wedding, you have merged both of your families. You're now living together. So what now? Um, so one thing that we get a lot of you know, a lot of people ask about is sibling rival rivalry. Yeah. So, you know, new siblings coming, you know, coming into the house together, yeah. you know, do they share a room together? Do they not? Um, male and female boundaries. Yeah. So if you have male, you know, one spouse has male children, the other has girl children, you know, yeah. how you balance that well together um, and balancing co-parenting schedules together. Yeah. So if you look at the kids, you know, a lot of times when they've moved to this point, it's really all been about the fun. You right. know, they've, they've enjoyed it. They've had a good time together. And we're, you know, whether this is approaching from, you know, both both uh, mom and dad or husband and wife have kids before yeah. uh, and you're kind of blending multiple kids or even if there's one kid. So the concept is, is once the excitement draws down and life is starting to begin together, the, the rivalry of siblings. And what I mean by that is, do they play one against the other? You know, is, you know, mom's biological children is she the dominant mm -hmm. or is dad's biological children are they the dominant who's the favorite who gets away with what how do they mix together mm -hmm. so the one thing we talk about in, in in our book blended and redeemed is when you first are blending and when you're first getting married it's really good to let the biological parent handle the discipline side of this mm -hmm. because it, it just there's an allegiance to the biological parent and again it may not be that way forever and you definitely want to um do that as a united front, mm -hmm. but always the biological parent taking that lead at front. Sure. And um, when it comes to the stepchild relationships, um, you know, if they are not getting along, you know, what are some things that you can do as a new step parent and as parent to help foster that relationship? Yeah. Well, I think, again, don't don't think that the fun should end. Mm -hmm. So I think kids still bond by having fun. So make sure that you're planning group activities. You're yep. you're really surrounding your new family with new traditions. You know, this is maybe eating together all at the same time, or maybe it's planning that, that, that first family trip together. Um, these are around bonding. So we wanna make sure that they have opportunities to have fun and bond together as a family. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, to those parents who are maybe in a season where your children aren't getting along and you're like, hey, we don't know what to do because maybe it's starting to cause a rift in your marriage. It's, you know, mm. your son or daughter is doing this or, you know, my, you know, and then they're saying the same thing about your children. You guys, we just want to encourage you to just be patient in the process. You know, understanding that when these, when you're, when you blend two families together, you're bringing in a whole bunch of different personalities. You're bringing mm -hmm. in different baggage. You're bringing in um, different characters, things from the past, and you're throwing it all together in one place. And so that can just. Um, it can, it can cause for, um, you know, maybe some confusion with the kids and, you know, maybe, um, the children's themselves, they're just having a hard time adapting. And now all of a sudden they have a new step parent and now yeah. all of a sudden they have new siblings. So this can be very difficult. And again, we go back to counseling on this. I, you know, we talked about it in the engagement process, but I think this is so good. Um, you know, even if you're beginning to blend and just counseling in general is just good, but yeah. you know, um, letting them have a voice and have a new neutral party to share how they're feeling. Maybe they don't want to hurt your feelings and say, you know what? I, I don't like my step parent or I don't like my stepsister. Yeah. Like maybe they're, they, they are just afraid to express that. Um, 
And we know that that's not always the case forever, but yeah. especially when it comes to beginning to blend and, and all of these new things are coming together. And like you said, when the excitement wears off, um, you know, I think kids oftentimes are like, okay, what is going on? And I'm not liking this. Like it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm. And this is hard. And so I think being patient with them in that process and providing them resources and tools to be able to process that out process and cope with that in a healthy way is it's vital and it's pivotal, yeah. um, not only for their growth, but for your growth as a family together. Yeah, I think a lot of times kids, the other thing that we hear is they don't like sharing. Sure. You know, a lot of, you know, coming from, if you've been in a single uh, parent household, you haven't had to share your mom or your dad. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're sharing, and we've talked about this a lot too, is when you get married, the spouse goes in the front seat. Sure. So it becomes that that priority becomes your spouse and then your children. So the time that you spend or maybe the uh, exclusivity that you get with your parent yeah. may not be as much. Yeah. So they can, there can be a lot of resentment there. So the one thing I would encourage, especially as you're, you're newly married, is make sure that you are taking time as the biological parent to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. Yeah. So don't get so caught up. And let me before I say that, let me say this too. Remember, they may not be as happy as you are right? because you are newly married mm -hmm. and you're living this exciting life. But for them, you said this a minute ago, they just got a new parent and maybe new siblings and yeah. maybe it's not going that great for them. Yeah. So make sure that you take that one-on-one -on -one time, spend it with them, ask them, hey, how are you feeling? Is there anything that's going on that you want to talk about? Yeah. You know, I want to make this great for you, but I need to know, you know, what you're feeling inside or how you're experiencing this. Yeah. Don't dismiss them because you're having such a great time. Yeah. No, I think that's really good. And, you know, um, another thing issue that we get a lot yeah. too is um when you're beginning to blend it especially and we've heard this before we're like you know you've got male children you've got female children and you know you've got to take some precautionary measures you know of where mm -hmm. in certain places and things that you haven't before and we talked about this in the book um you know, I know um, we live in a house full of boys and being the only yeah. female, you know, I have to lock my door if I'm going to go to the bathroom or take a shower because yeah. the little boys will just want to walk in. And so, you know, maybe it's a mom and a daughter who are not used to being around yeah male, you well, know, this siblings, is real. and yes. this is real. And so, you know, it's, it's taken those precautionary measures of, okay, we need to make sure that Susie has her own bathroom or that, yeah. you know, the boys know that when she is in there, they can't just walk in there, you yeah. know, um, you know, even down to like the clothes that you're wearing, you know, um, you know, boys and girls are impressionable. So it's, are we, um, taking the right measures and steps to make sure that we're guarding our children's heart and eyes um, to the opposite sex, even though it is, you know, their stepbrother or stepsister, uh, to make sure that everybody is comfortable, yeah. you know, to make sure that nobody feels uncomfortable, um, you know, but, you know, also when it comes to sharing rooms together, you know, um, best practices is boys can share rooms together and girls can share rooms together if yeah. you have to share rooms or they have separate rooms, but not commingling them together because we have got had, you know, I, we've had several people reach out where they have instances of mm -hmm. mom's daughter and stepdad's son begin dating or begin having yeah. um, an intimate relationship. And, um, you know, I think that these are things that people think, oh, that wouldn't happen or you can overlook. But you guys, we see it in counseling more often than not. Well, you got to remember, they don't have a history of siblings. Sure. So they didn't grow up together. You know, yeah. our, 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 we, have, we have all boys, so it's a little bit different. But, you know that history creates the the balance of like, that's my brother, or that's my sister. If right. you're newly married, they may not have that. Right. So again, just taking the proper steps, being smart about this, understanding yeah. that there is a preparation that needs to take place sure. so that you can continue to have a healthy, um, a healthy, you know, blended family. Um, other things that I, I don't want to miss, we've talked a lot about the children here. I want to touch on the other side of this, which is yeah. the, kind of the marriage side of this yeah. is number one, don't quit dating. Yeah. Don't quit dating. Marriage has now become your second priority beyond, you know, your relationship with Christ. So first thing we would say is make sure that you find um, uh, a good church home. Yeah. But keep dating. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and you guys, the other thing when it comes to the newly married and blending process is getting used to an, a, the co-parenting dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that um, I was already used to that because my ex-spouse and his wife married um way before I did. So yeah. I was a single parent for about six years. And so, um, 
you know, then bringing Scott into the picture, I'm sure that was different for them as it was for me whenever um, Michael got, you know, a, yeah. new, a new stepmom. And so, um, you know, understanding that that is going to change the dynamic mm -hmm. when you have four adults working together versus two, um, mm -hmm. that, that does change. And so, you know, preparing your hearts and minds for what the back and forth schedules mm -hmm. are going to be like between your homes. Maybe it's your kid is this weekend, your, you know, your spouse's kid is the other weekend and yeah. what that's going to look like. Um, and again, I think this goes back to the engagement process, you know, hashing all of that out and really talking through that. Yeah. Um, because more, you know, we, we counsel a lot of blended families where, mm -hmm this becomes points of uh, contention and it's in its avenues of disunity where people are not on the same page and you know we're not disciplining the same or yeah. they don't discipline they discipline my kids this way or not that way and so uh, making sure that you have a united front. And I love here in Matthew, um, it tells them, it tells us in Matthew seven twenty four, and this is one of yeah. my favorite verses, but it says, everyone who hears these words of mine does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on the house, but did not fall because it had founded on the rock. And, um, we were talking about this actually in church this weekend. And I mm. love it because, um, in the beginning to blend process, you guys, the rain is going to come, oh, the yeah, wind well. is going to blow, and man, they're going to feel like some times where you feel like you are drowning. Um, so, you know, remembering that um, when you are beginning to blend, making sure that Jesus is the foundation and bedrock of your home, your marriage, um, in your personal relationship with the Lord is so foundational. I think this carries over into everything that we're talking about, even yeah. the co-parenting relationship. Um, so just making sure that that is a vital uh, piece to uh, to your you know newly blended family. Yeah, no, I think all those are great, and and there's and again, there's a lot of aspects of, and we're covering just a few here. Yeah, and and you know whether that's you know getting getting in line financially. Yeah, uh, you know you know we talk about you know spiritually making sure that you're finding the right church, your kids. There's so many areas. If you're listening to this podcast and you're newly married you're doing the right things. Like you're, yeah. you're setting yourself up to get fed the information. One of the things that Vanessa and I always say is we didn't know what we needed to know. Yeah. And that's why when we started our blending process, it, there were a lot of, there were issues. There were things that came up oh, yeah. because we yep. weren't prepared for what the journey was. No, we, we were in love, but we were not prepared. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people find themselves. And if you're listening, we're glad you're preparing. Yep. So next week, Yep. This is going to be the, the, the last week of our series. We're going to be talking about how to keep your marriage a priority. Yes. So you mentioned me. I just mentioned dating your spouse, continuing yeah. that. We're going to go deeper into that. Yeah. And make sure that your priorities for a marriage are in line. So yes. check it out next week. If you haven't, go back two weeks, get our start yes. of our series. You're going to have a great time. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.